Hello, my name is Lee Presser. This is my show. I speak frequently to very interesting people. Some of these conversations are so exciting, so intellectually stimulating, I thought others might like to listen in. This is the reason we started recording Conversation with Lee Presser. Welcome to Conversation with Lee Presser. Our guest today is Keith Clark, director and trainer of the Coro Fellows Program in Public Affairs. Coro is a graduate level, nine month training program that prepares talented individuals for effective and ethical leadership positions in the public arena. Each year, the St. Louis Coro Program selects 16 fellows from a competitive pool of applicants. Coro provides its fellows with real world experience within specialized sectors of the St. Louis community, including business, labor, government, and nonprofit. Mr. Clark is himself an alum of the St. Louis Coral Fellows Program. He's been recognized for his leadership commitment and service throughout his career. This includes receiving the David Lindgren Fellowship Award for Social Innovation during his time at Carnegie Mellon and being selected for the Starting Block Institute for Social Innovation held at MIT in Boston. Keith Clark, welcome to Conversation. Thanks, great to be here. Yeah, it's good to have you. So, um, you, the, this Coro thing, probably most of the people who are listening have no clue um, uh, what, what it is, where it came from, what it does. So we're going to have to start right from the very beginning sure. and just talk about uh, what Coro is and how it got started. So basically Coro got going in the uh, early 1940s. Uh, the two founders were in a position where they were seeing a lot of young, re lot of young veterans returning from World War II and there was no program that existed to train them for future leadership in public affairs. Um, you have med school for doctors, you've got law school for lawyers. There's no program to train the next generation of civic leaders. And so that's what they sought out to do. Well, how is that different than, um, what's it called, the, uh, the people who go to the State Department? They go through, the, through some training, um, and I can't even remember, what, they're called FSOs. I'm, I'm not yeah, certain. Yeah. I'm not uh, anyways, certain. There, there is some there is some training there, but the the people who organize your uh, uh, your group they they just had an interest in making sure that there were leaders. Yeah. So I think what they were looking at was to say at that time it was what can we do to ensure democracy not only survives but also advances, um, and so it actually modeled itself similar to to med school where regardless of what concentration or specialization you're going to have as a doctor, you need to know how the full body functions. Um, and that's the same when it comes to leadership in public affairs is whether you're going to be a leader in the business community, the nonprofit community, the political community, it's important that you know how society overall functions. And so that's how the design of the program came to be in that it's multi-sector in, uh, internships where you get to experience how nonprofits work, labor unions work, political campaigns work, government agencies work, so that you get that full breadth of exposure and experience. Now, you speak from personal experience, you, uh, uh, because you were one of them, right? You were a that's fellow. What, yeah, that's yeah. what brought me to St. Louis. Right. So let's start from the beginning. Where, oh, at what level of education were you when you first applied to be a fellow with Coro? So I applied for Coro right after, uh, well, I was actually in the middle of completing a master's degree in education while also working at the Federal Reserve Bank in Boston. And now is that normal? I mean, is, is that a normal progression? People have already finished their undergraduate and are now working on a master's before they start applying for, for a fellowship with you? Or? Yeah. So when it comes to the typical fellow, the typical applicant who apply, um, Coro tends to attract the most, most competent, capable, diverse, uh, and driven uh, people from across the country. That could be anyone uh, as, as young as recent college graduates, young professionals. Uh, and, and in some cases, we've had fellows go through the program in their 30s into their 40s as well. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Really? Now, you're only doing how many per year? Uh, so there's 64 fellows selected nationally, and we have 16 here in St. Louis. So S St. Louis is fortunate in that Coral's only in five cities. Uh, and St. Louis happens to be one of them. We're also in San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, Pittsburgh, and, and fortunately, St. Louis. Mm, okay. I, I just wonder how St. Louis or Pittsburgh got in there. 
<laughs> um, yeah, the, the story on that, to my knowledge, uh, we've been in St. Louis since the 70s, um, and it, it was an initiative that, uh, through the founder of Cora out in San Francisco, Don Fletcher, started having conversations in the Midwest, looking at where Cora could, could best fit. There was a really strong, um, strong community here when it comes to civic progress, the Danforth Foundation, um, and coincidentally, Al Fleischman from Fleischman Hillard. Um, also got involved just to say St. Louis needs a program like this. Um, we're looking to train the next generation of leaders for the region um, and they saw Coro as a great way to do that so they brought it here in the 70s. I think the first class was was towards the late 70s and we've been running strong ever since. Now today is February the 11th of 2014 and before the show started you were saying that you're right in the period now where you're starting to get geared up to choose this next 16 from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. So tell us what has occurred up to this point. I mean, you've got people like yourself who somehow they heard a coro, yeah. right? And what was the process? They heard a coro and then what? So hopefully they heard, heard about coro from an alum of the program or from someone who's familiar with the program just because what we realize is it's a significant commitment that you're making. You're, you're applying for a program that is asking you to spend nine months working and learning full time. Um, and so the way I found out about it was the woman that started the, organ the, the program I was participating in told me it was the most significant year of professional growth in her, in her life. Mm -hmm. So they find out about the program and move through the application process. Basically that consists of three essays, three letters of recommendation, uh, resume, a transcript, uh, we'll review that. We'll have different community leaders review the applications. From that, we'll, we'll select a, our, our pool of finalists. From the finalists is where we select our, our 16 fellows. So the people who were applying, they, uh, what do they go through in order to apply? I understand it's, it's a complicated process. Plus, they've got to give you some money, too, an application fee, right? Right. So we do have an application fee. Um, what we do is, for those that want to apply early, um, we'll, we'll reduce that application fee so that the, uh, the application is more accessible. Um, and then as they move through the process, you know, like I said, there's the application. And then once we get to the finalist round, it's a series of interviews, activities, exercises, so that we can get a gauge for how, how they perform, how they do when it comes to handling um, thinking on their feet, thinking critically, working in groups, things like that. Do they have to write papers or something? Hi, I'm so-and-so, and this is why I want to be a Coral Fellow? So that's part of the original application, is that sort of first essay is, um, you know, what, what, what about Coro makes sense for you? How does Coro fit into your career trajectory? So that's one of the first three essays, yeah. So you're, you know, you're speaking to people that either might be interested themselves or maybe they're the parents or grandparents of somebody. What would you say to them as a, as a reason that they might want to go to their kid and go, hey, hey, check this out? Uh, that's, that's a good question because I think typically, you know, for, for the age group that we tend to attract to the program, they're at a point in their lives where they're saying, I want to make a difference, I don't know how, and I don't know where. Um, and so they're coming out of college, they're coming out of grad school, coming out of competitive programs like Teach for America, City Year, et cetera. And they see that there are a lot of things that we need to address in society. They want to they wanna make a difference. They want to commit their, their lives, their careers to public service in some form. Coral provides almost like a public service buffet um, in that you get to see not only how society functions in government, in business, in labor, you also get to see how you function in those environments, in Be those communities. Before we get to that, I just want to go back and just finish up. So you, you create this pool mm -hmm. at, from the applicants, and they have written their essay, and you've s siphoned through a whole bunch of the... Yeah. How many do you get normally that you pull from? It's in the hundreds each year. So, so it's a national applicant pool. It's actually a global applicant pool. Okay, so you got this huge number, and then you, for the St. Louis crowd, how many are you, or, or is that the way it works? Do, or <laughs> is it like the, over the nation mm -hmm. that you're looking and then 16 eventually get assigned to St. Louis? Yep. That's, that's how it works. Yeah, that's, that's how it works. So, you, so are you part of this process of the picking? Very much or, so. Okay. So, yeah. All right. So now you've you, you get, you, you picked from these hundreds and now you've narrowed it down to what? 16. But I mean, you've narrowed it. 
Oh, for the pool of finalists? Yeah. Uh, it's usually around 100 finalists that okay. we'll get to. And then from that, the you 64 get it down to 64. Naturally. Yeah. So, and so that about is half the people are disappointed, or uh, at least more than a third are disappointed. At the time, yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. they get to come back again another time? Or? Yeah, they, they, we, we do have candidates reapply. We encourage it. Um, what, you know, like when your first question about is it typical that people find out about CORO after doing graduate work or being, being in the workforce for a couple of years, we find that the more someone brings into the CORO program, the more experience they have, the more they get from the program, the more they offer to the, it's a, it's a collaborative experience and that you're going through with a cohort of 16. So what we seek to have in each cohort is a diverse representation, academic interests, professional interests, careers, geography, um, everything across the board. The more diverse a class we have, the more rich uh, an experience it is for that group. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now you've been, you got your 16 and this is, you said March, April, mm -hmm. that you'll finally come to this next group. We'll, we'll basically have our 16 confirmed, hopefully, uh, right around April, May. Okay. Then what happens to them? Uh, then they have the summer to rest up, relax, uh, and get ready for the program. We start up uh, in the first week of September. Now, just to clarify again, this is, this is nine months, and, but they're actually paying for this experience. Like, they're, they're paying a tuition to be part of this group, right? Right, so for the program, there's a small tuition. It's $4,000 uh, to do the program in St. Louis uh, for that nine, month ex nine months experience. So Plus they have to pay for their own apartment, food, and all that, right? So right. they're on their own as far as living. Yeah, so the way the, our sort of financial model is set up is as a nonprofit, we're running the program in, in a way that we can keep the tuition low so that we can apply, uh, appeal to all candidates. And then when we need to, when, it, when the candidate has that financial need, provide some sort of stipend. So we do offer financial support. Um, unfortunately, we're not a large university or large institution that can say, you know, apply, we'll, we'll you know, free give ride. you significant free loans, ride. <laughs> will you have free ride, tuition deductions, um, and you get a nice generous stipend. Um, we're, no. we're, we don't have the resources no. for that. I would, I would love to be in a position to do that, uh, having gone through CORO myself. It was one of the aspects of the program that you make a pretty significant commitment to your own personal learning and professional growth. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a significant commitment you're making. It pays off and, and, and there's true benefit to it. And it's in the short term when you're looking at it saying, over the next 12 months, um, I'm going to pay tuition and do this program and be unpaid for nine months, or I'm going to turn down a job or turn down grad school that says, "Hey, you know, we'll give you a free ride." And, mm -hmm. um, so there is a there is a financial component to the program that we're always seeking to improve on, um, and it is, you know, like I said, it's a career's worth of experience in nine months. So oftentimes, fellows come out of the program uh, on a trajectory that would not have been possible, would not be uh, realized had they sort of continued on that regular path or chosen not to do CORA. Okay, so come, now you've picked your 16, they've rested up for the summer, they're tanned, they're ready to go. <laughs> now it's September. Yeah. Okay, now what happens? Um, so basically they move through the program and there's three threads to the program throughout the year. There's the placement thread, which is like short-term, high-impact internships, four to five weeks where they're working full-time. And they start with their, their placements typically move through nonprofit to labor, to government, uh, to a group project, to a campaign, to a corporate placement. And then the way they close out the program is an individual project, which is something that they identify, they design, they market, they secure the funding for, and then they implement all on their own. So let me just review. You're saying that they are given certain projects that they must perform. Mm -hmm. And at the very end, then they have to invent something of their very own that's significant. Yes. Okay. Yep. So, so that's one thread of the program <clears throat> that the fellows get is that full time, sort of in the field, at the organizations, hands on experiential learning. And Coro finds these positions right. for them. So they're, they're not looking, they, they, they're just assigned, go here, meet so-and-so. Exactly, so over the course of the year, we're identifying 16 partner organizations, you know, every four to five weeks. 
that has an um, impactful project, valuable project, an issue, a problem, a question, something that they're, they're looking to have an outside point of view on. Um, we're working with them, identify the projects, we set the fellows up um, and send them out. Can you give us some examples of the kind of places that people would be working at or people they'd be working with? So, so in St. Louis, we're, we're very fortunate in that the access to the city is, is, is tremendous. And so we'll have fellows on projects at organizations that are as high profile as you know, Peabody Energy, Look League Gas Company, uh, Nestle Purina. So the fellows are all currently working at different corporate placements. Um, in the nonprofit arena, we'll work with organizations like Parents as Teachers, um, HomeWorks, the Teacher Home Visit Program, in addition to organizations like the United Way, Missouri Foundation for Health, um, just what we're seeking to do uh, every year with the 16 group of fellows is send them out so that individually they get that in-depth exposure to an organization. As a class, they get the breadth of exposure to the nonprofit sector, whether it's the foundation, community, social service agencies, small nonprofits, large nonprofits. Mm -hmm. And so um, how long are they in these various blocks? Typically, it's four to five weeks. Um, and so, and, to and what are they doing when they're in that block specifically? So, so how it starts is the fellow will walk into an organization and they don't do any background research. Um, they find out about their placement typically the Friday before their Monday assignments. Um, and that's part of the training is being able to jump into a situation, think on their feet, ask the right questions, engage the appropriate stakeholders. So they'll walk into an organization and there may be a project in mind or they may have the ability to sort of sort of co-identify and, and then facilitate developing a project as well. This could be anything from developing a company newsletter to doing program evaluation for a, a, a local nonprofit. They could also be looking into having, so a nonprofit may have the idea of, do we launch this social enterprise? Do we explore this, this aspect of, a, of our business portfolio? They put a fellow on it, um, and the fellow goes off and, and does the research, does the work. Are they looking for like an outside opinion? That's, that's where the fellows prove to be most valuable. And so most organizations that we tend to engage each year see that as the tremendous value is they're asking a lot of questions. They're engaging in a new way. They're bringing a perspective that um, wouldn't, be, wouldn't be possible from, from within the organization, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the organizations are listening. It's not like they're you know, taking on this young person and saying, oh, well, go do this. And then at the end of it, it's like, eh, okay, thanks. Right, um, that's, that's one of the, I think, one of the aspects of the St. Louis program that makes it so unique and, and so valuable is that the organizations we engage have an investment in the core of fellows that they engage. So they're setting them up on projects that have impact make a difference to the company, make a dif difference to the organization so that the fellow's not just making copies, not just finding coffee. They're off um, you know, engaging with whether it be their, their boards, senior staff, director level staff, working with programs, um, that they're finding ways to you know, learn as much as they can about public affairs. The best way to do that is to do it with real world projects working on. Well, let's be specific because we mm -hmm. have you who did this thing. So <laughs> tell, okay. us, tell us about some of the things that, that when you were in the program, places that, they, that you were sent and the things that you actually did while you were there and why you feel that those were of value to you. Oh, wow. Big question. Yeah. <laughs> or a, yeah. Lot, a lot of questions. Um, so for me, the, the different organizations I got to work at included Trailnet. Um, uh, well, that's a good organization. Great organization. Yeah. Um, St. Louis County Department of Health, Carpenters District Council of, Carpenters District Council of Greater St. Louis. Um, we worked with a collaboration of foundations, including Missouri Foundation for Health, Daughters of Charity, Lutheran Foundation, Cardinals Care. Um, and then I also worked uh, with Fleischman Hillard um, and then closed out the program uh, by doing an individual project with Nonprofit Services Center. So that was sort of my thread to, to, to my year. Um, and it was one of those situations where you don't have, you can't have a favorite placement because each time you're jumping into a new project, no expectations because it, it, they tend to get blown out of the water. And that was the case for me. Um, and fortunately, you know, that's, that's what we seek to deliver for each fellow as well, um, is setting them up on projects that they may have come in with a background in marketing. They're not gonna go to a project at a nonprofit that needs a new marketing plan. 
Um, what we're seeking to do is stretch these fellows in ways they haven't been stretched before um, and expose them to issues that they haven't been exposed to before. And that's usually what's most exciting. Um, the fellows come into the program with a huge energy to sort of exceed expectations. And the people we attract to this program, they're high performers. They're exceptionally bright, really talented. They're, they know what an A looks like, so to speak, and they also know how to deliver on that. When you get into real world projects and working at these different organizations, um, they're addressing problems that we don't have answers to. Um, and so they're seeking to figure that out. They're seeking to exceed expectations. And oftentimes, not only they, will they surprise their supervisors in terms of what they're capable of producing and what a young recent college graduate can deliver um, as they move through the program, they, they surprise themselves. They leave the program thinking that anything can be done in four to five weeks. Um, not always the case, <laughs> and, and, and it's a great, uh, you know, it's, uh, that's an outcome that, that gets me excited. Now you wound up, after being a fellow, you wound up working for the core organization? Oh, you right. are now. I, don't I know, am did now, Did you go yeah. directly to that? No. So, so after Coro, I, I took advantage of a partnership that we have with Carnegie Mellon University. Um, so Coro has a number of different partnerships with graduate schools, including George Warren Brown School here in St. Louis, um, as well as some, uh, some public policies and public administration programs across the country, California, New York, um, and in Pittsburgh. And so I utilized uh, the partnership we have at Carnegie Mellon, did an accelerated master's there accelerated masters there. Um, they're generous in that for any Coro alum, they provide a pretty substantial scholarship. Um, and so that's another piece uh, about the tuition that, or about doing the program is. It buys you something it, later. It's, <laughs> it can, we don't, you know, that's, we don't want people doing the program to get the discounted masters. Um, and yet it does set you up for, for, for that sort of benefit. So I did, I did do a, a, master's in, a master's of science in public policy management from mm -hmm. Carnegie Mellon. And How well, would you I was rate there. that experience to your Coro experience? Totally different. It's classroom. It was classroom. And the whole time I was there, it was how do, I, how do we bring this back out? Um, and that was what was fun for me was to be back in the classroom learning in that way. And yet what was most valuable was having the Coro experience to point to. And so there, was, there were numerous moments throughout, throughout my graduate degree where we would be in, in, in a class learning about something that you know, would have been the night before his reading. And I'm sitting there saying, this is what I just did. This is what Coro just trained me on. And so it was in some ways sort of like, oh my God, here I'm, I'm doing a master's just to prove what I what did, what, what, the, what I've already seen. Yeah. Um, and yet it gave me that real world application. And that's what in, in speaking with our partners, we're, we're seeking to expand our, our, our partnerships with different universities. They see the value. Because when Coro graduates come back into the, into the graduate school classroom, they're asking the, the, the pertinent questions, the burning questions. Um, they're driving with, how does this look? How does this really play out in, in, you know, in society? And so mm -hmm. that's where, for me, the, to, two totally different experiences, both, both incredibly valuable. Um, and then you wound up after that, coming back to, uh, to your current position at Coro? Yeah, so while I was there, they, um, I was staying in touch with Coro because I knew it was an organization I wanted to um, come back to at some point. Um, and while I was there, the job opened up. I told them if you could hold it till December, I'd be here. Uh, they and did. Obviously they did. And they, they yeah. did, and, and I made it, and, and I've been here since, yeah. Now, the, the, the gentleman who introduced me to you, his mm -hmm. daughter was a Coro Fellow. Yeah, that's right. And at some point, somehow she wound up working at the White House. Is that correct? At some point, somehow she wound up at the White House. Yeah. Uh, so what's really exciting is what the fellows do after the program. Um, so she, she was one of four fellows who just, in the last five years, we've had four fellows go on and intern at the White House. Now, this is after the, the project that they'd set it. So they're graduated out of Coro. Yep. And this was some other part of their life. So they've since graduated. So they've graduated. They're underway with you know their graduate schools, their first job out of Coro, or they're they're trying to figure things out. And in some ways, they they end up doing big. Well, in a lot of ways, they end up doing big things. Um, what other positions have Coro graduates gone into? So the ones I get most excited about are here in St. Louis, and that. Over the last three years, we've seen our retention, you know, just increase substantially. So, for the Coro fellows that 
we're bringing them from all over the country. Mm -hmm. um, you know, to, we're sitting here, it's seven degrees outside, and I've got at least six fellows from this year's class from California that are somehow, <laughs> somehow still here and excited to stay here when they graduate. And that was the case last year. And so we've got, you know, fellows that will take jobs at organizations that they worked for during the course of their placement experience. Other fellows where, um, like I said, that last project they identify on their own. Many of them see that as this is my launching pad. So they'll, they'll do their individual project in a way such that they're writing their job description. F they're writing their job description for what they do after Coro. Mm -hmm. um, so some of them stay here, they stay, they stay in the philanthropic community. Some of them have kind of latched on to the excitement in St. Louis around the startup community. And so we've got a number of Coro fellow alums working in T-Rex in the startup community, which is really exciting. Others uh, stay on the path that they, they saw themselves on. They continue to law school, continue to graduate school, continue to med school. Um, what is, is also great is when they go off and do that and then say, I'm gonna come back to St. Louis. Um, so yeah, it, uh, it's, exci it's always exciting to keep track because they're, they're up to great things. They could be doing great things in DC, here locally in St. Louis, all over. In the last couple of minutes, and we're really down to a couple of minutes, is oh, there wow. anything that we <laughs> haven't covered that you wanted to say? Oh, <laughs> I can't believe our time is flown by. Uh, yeah, so I quick. told you at the beginning that time goes by fast here. But uh, yeah, is there some important things that you want people to know right now? So, so Coro in St. Louis is, is I think, one of, it's one of the gems that we have here. Like I said, Coro's only in five cities. Um, and I go through New York, San Francisco, LA, and you see St. Louis has got it. Um, that's what makes the program unique, is in the nine months you get the logic of the city. You get to see how our systems work, how society functions. So it's, it's, a, it's a unique program only because of the support that we get from the community. So every year, hundreds of organizations that host fellows are doing a huge service, not to just that future leader, also just in sustaining the program. So it's a, it's a great program to get involved with. We, we love the organizations that partner with us and have projects, and it's also a great program to to send your friends to, send your former interns to. So we ask Do folks to- Do you go to Wash U or, or St. Louis U to, to try and tell people about Coro that never heard of it before? Definitely, yeah. Our recruitment to Wash U, to St. Louis University, Harris Stowe, Lindenwood. Um, we're also now, this year we, we built a relationship with Truman State, which we're really excited about going out to Mizzou. So we really want to improve our retention for the Midwest. Um, looking in St. Louis, to Missouri, to the Midwest. It's, we want to, re to train the next generation of civic leaders for the St. Louis region. Um, and so we want to look here first. Great. We covered a lot of territory here, and I want to thank you so much for uh, coming in and being with us today. Uh, oh, I mean, fun. I think to most people who are listening to this right now, it's like, Coro? What? Yeah. What is it? Oh, now I know. And yeah, I think I want my kid in that. Hopefully. So hopefully. Uh, thanks very much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thank you, Lee. And to the audience, I've been speaking with Keith Clark. He's with the uh, Cor Coral Fellowships Program. Um, well, you've already heard what he had to say. This is going to be up on YouTube. So uh, if you want other people to see it, send them the link. That way they can see this as well. Thank you very much for being with us. And we hope to see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>